Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are going to be working on the Bandai 1 and 1 44th scale ATAT. -AT. As you can see, it's built already here. I'm trying a different approach to these videos now. So, this is the finished product, but I'm not sure how long this video is going to end up being. But uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy and uh, have fun. See how it goes. Before I get stuck into the build, or before we get stuck into the build, uh, the one thing I do want to mention is I did notice this before I started painting it, but it was too late already because it was built. Uh, the, uh, the little pegs on the feet here are mounted upside down, so they're supposed to be mounted this way. So these are upside down. I figured I'd mention that before somebody else notices it and does it. I, do, I did realize that after I had assembled it, but by the time I realized that it, it was already glued onto the base, so it was a little too late. But anyways, enjoy this guys. Let me know what you think of the new format and we'll go from there. So I was going to start this off after I primed it, but I figured I'd let you guys see it before it's primed, what it looks like. Especially what I did with the base, since it's going to be the Jakku version, I kind of added the sand to the base. And we can kind of sandify it from there, so what we're going to do now is just uh, prime it white. I'm using the Vallejo White Surface Primer on that. And then we'll start doing some pre-shading afterwards. So, <clears throat> one thing I'm going to point out for somebody else does, um, I did overspray here a little bit. Instead of waiting for it to dry and then sanding them off and redoing it, we're just going to pass it off as battle damage, and when we're weathering, we're going to cover that up. So, we are doing something a little different. Um, instead of using regular airbrush paints like I normally would, I'm trying to get scale color in the airbrush to see how it's working. So, everything for now, we're going to do the black lining, uh, the pre shading basically. Everything that I'm going to be using uh, on this uh, on this project is going to be scale color from here on. I'm watering it down about 50-50 paint to airbrush thinner. And let's see how it works.
since I've made a complete mess out of this, which is exactly what I managed to do, I'm going to go and clean the airbrush out and get some more white back on this to kind of bring it all back. Okay, let's try fixing this. I've got some white back in here. Okay, giving scale 75 one more chance here, the scale color one more chance here, this time it is arctic blue that I have loaded in here. So you guys just witnessed what was a fairly unsuccessful first go at airbrushing scale 75 paints or airbrushing with scale 75 paints. Uh, what I realized is they need to be thinned down in a very different manner than, than what I'm used to on, on, on all the other paints that, that I use for airbrushing such as uh, Vallejo model color so on and so forth or Vallejo air even. Uh, that said I figured it out and uh, towards the end, I was doing a little bit better, but all that, all that, all those spray issues were because of the fact that I was just kind of trying to figure out the uh, consistencies that I that I needed in these. We're done with the airbrushing. This is what we're looking like. I'm, I'm actually happy with where we're at. So now I'm going to set up for some dry brushing. We're going to dry brush some highlights on here, some edge highlights, and then we'll go in with washes and start washing this got here is just some basic uh, white, like regular white from uh, Vallejo Model Color, and I did not thin this down at all, this is just straight out of the tube, and I've got a very flat, 
uh, somewhat uh, somewhat uh, soft brush here and all I'm gonna do is just get some of this paint on my brush here and then wipe most of it off on this paper towel and by most of it I truly mean most of it like I'm gonna leave as little as possible on the actual brush just like so and then all I'm gonna do is come in on the model on the very surface or on the very edges here and just lightly lightly brush the edges here just to give it that extra pop that extra highlight pop on here now most of this will will not be visible with uh, once we get all the uh, washes and, and oils and whatnot on here but at the very least at least we'll get some pop around the edges which which is pretty much the goal on here like the ladder here and so on and so forth next thing I'm going to do on here is give it a coat of uh, gloss varnish just so that it can take the <coughs> take the washes a little bit easier but here it is after the dry brushing can't really tell that much of a difference like it doesn't make that much of a difference visually but it, it does if you look close up it kind of makes the edges pop is what I was going for okay so the gloss is now dry hopefully uh, what we're going to do now is get a black wash on here to start with the um, the weathering. Uh, what I'm going to use for the wash is something I haven't used in a long while, but I think it'll work well. I'm going to use the Flory Models clay washes. I'm going to use the black. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is you don't have to use alcohol or you don't have to use uh, in, in anything caustic really to wipe this off. You just use either water or your saliva even or so on and so forth. So it's 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 a wonderful thing to use and it actually goes on pretty well. So basically we'll apply it pretty thick and then we'll we'll remove it afterwards we'll just leave it in the in the recesses So let's talk about our wash. Um, I cleaned off most of it already. I left it on this panel here to show you guys exactly what I did. Um, I, as I said, I ended up using uh, Flory Weathering Wash Black. These are the clay washes, which a lot of you might be asking why I'm using a clay wash instead of regular enamel washes. I actually enjoy doing this, especially on flat surfaces. I feel like it gives me more control of where, where the wash ends up and how much of it I can remove and so on and so forth plus it's non-toxic so I also prefer using that because of that um, all I do is basically just take a simple q-tip uh, moisten it basically I just, just stick it in my mouth and just lick it a little bit with my saliva basically and then just kinda go in here and remove most of it off uh, leaving it in the recesses so on and so forth as you can see it comes off fairly fairly easily the trick to this is to make sure you're doing it over a gloss surface if you do it over a matte surface it becomes a lot harder to remove this because 
the, the, the matte surface obviously isn't as smooth as the glosses. But, and the point here isn't to, isn't to really weather the model as far as, as far as like the, the, the black shade goes, it's more of a panel wash, or a panel line wash, as opposed to actually weathering, weathering this. Uh, that said, I do leave some of it uh, kind of streaking to, to give it a light weathering, but the weathering is what we're going to be doing next. <laughs> Okay guys, um, last but not least, what I'm going to do now before we start on the oils is give this another uh, coating with some uh, Vallejo gloss uh, varnish, just to make sure that the oil doesn't uh, doesn't clock on here, but just to give you guys a better idea, see, like I said, I don't use this completely for streaking but it's possible also to use this as, as a streaky to, to, to streak with um, and it also it also gives the the entire model a nice little filter on here it kind of dulls it down a little bit um, I've painted entire models using this this technique using these washes these clay washes now I know UMP also makes clay washes there's quite a few companies that do um, I only use the flory ones because those are the ones I I got first or when I heard of um, uh, of these uh, clay washes years and years ago, and that's what I've been using uh, for no other reason. I mean, clay wash is a clay wash, I would imagine, so I don't think it makes much of a difference. Uh, anyhow, let me give this another spray down with some uh, some gloss varnish, and then I'll be back for the oils. All right, guys. So I want to show you what I'm going to be doing here, and then I'm going to have to do it a little bit off camera, uh, just because I kind of started playing around with it, and there's no real way of me to do this on camera. So uh, what I've got here is some oil paints, uh, white, orange, and brown, uh, for the weathering. First and foremost, what I'm going to weather is or weather. What I'm going to do is filter some white in here, especially on some of on top of the panels here so let me show you guys how I'm going to do that how I'm doing that is I grab a toothpick okay and I dot some of this paint onto the main panels here because essentially all it's do all I'm doing is putting it on the main panels just like so and all this is for is to kind of brighten it up and, and make it pop even more I dip my uh, my brush in some uh, odorless uh, turpentine I kind of swirl, swirl this paint around, especially in the middle here. And I'm trying to stay away from the uh, from the edges because that's where the shadows is, are. But I kind of, kind of move it in into place like this. And then. <coughs> Obviously, let it dry afterwards, but but the main uh, the main purpose here is is to make sure it actually looks smooth, especially on the edges. So, like, if it's not looking smooth, you want to clean your brush off and come in with a clean brush to pick off some of the excess on the edges here, especially. See that? Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush out one more time. So as you can see, it's still a little rough looking. And come back in here on the edges and just kind of feather it out. Just like this. And now we have to wait for it to dry. I did the other side over here already. To show you guys what it looks like with the white on it. Now, you probably can't tell much of a difference on camera, but it, it there is a visual difference between between the two angles or between the two sides. So 
Next up, what I'm going to do is very, very lightly. Now, this is, I'm talking very lightly, and this is only going to be This isn't going everywhere, this is only going in specific areas as far as as far as the uh, the streaking goes on here is what we're doing. So I'm donning my brown oil paint. Um like really randomly uh, to create streaks. Uh the point is this is a uh this is a Jacko version, so I'm ex by then you're expecting these to be beat up, and I'm gonna do the same with the with the orange. Mix the orange in here next to the brown. Just dot these in here like this. Yeah, I'm figuring I I'm okay to do a little bit. A little, I'm okay to go a little overboard with the with the rust and stuff on here because it being the Jakku version I mean I feel like like we can get away with this being a little banged up you know now that all that's dotted I'm gonna grab a smaller brush for this a small round brush actually something like this I have a special set of uh, oil brushes that I use I'm not gonna use the flat brush for this and same thing I'm gonna dip it in my um in my odorless thinner here and just kind of just going to feather this down one at a time it's the thing you're okay with taking your time with this like it doesn't have to be done perfectly with the first like brush stroke on here and it's okay to actually like get messy with it and, and just kind of like screw it up the first time around because it's oil so the wonderful thing is you can literally come in with more more thinner whatever you're using as your thinner and literally kind of work away the stuff that you want, don't want there you know just like I'm doing now so like what I'm doing here I'm just screwing with and there's really no like set There's really no like set rule to this. I just kind of, I just kind of do what I think looks good. You know, I just keep doing it until, until I think it looks good. So I'm just gonna keep screwing with it basically like this until it looks good. So, um, this isn't, as I said, this isn't very comfortable for me. Unfortunately, else I'd love to film this, but it's actually very hard for me to do this on film. So I'm going to film me doing this panel. Um, and then the rest of it, I'll have to do off camera. We are getting close, only a few things left to do. Uh, <clears throat> here's what the uh, what the battle damage looks like. I let this dry for, well, it's been a little over 12 hours now at this point, but it's still, it's still got places to dry, but for the most part, it's, uh, it's what it's going to look like.
when it dries completely. I'm, I'm happy with it. It didn't come out looking bad at all. It came out looking quite nice. Um, things that are left is we have to paint the uh, the red inside of the um, vision ports or whatever you want to call it there inside the head. Uh, we have to do the base and then we have to do the uh, the, or the matte varnish on it to uh, to bring the colors back down and then we are done and then we're good to go. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the red using some deep red for the base from scale color and I'm going to use some Antares red for the highlights see how far I have to actually bring the highlights up. I don't think it's going to have to be that far because there's I don't think there's going to be much visible on here but uh, but yeah let's get going with that and then we'll start on the base afterwards. Okay, so there wasn't much, there actually wasn't much of me to get in there just because you can, you can hardly see anything in there anyway, so I did do two layers, I did the base coat and then I did the one highlight color and then I had to fix up the, uh, the edges on here, so we can move on to the base now. Uh, what I'm going to use for the base is Iroko from Scale 75 as a base coat for the sand. I think that'll give us a nice, uh, nice dark base for us to be able to bring the uh, the sand color up on afterwards. But uh, it's it's basically just a straight base coat. There's nothing special on this, so I can get going with that now.
so with the base color and our base dry now, we can go ahead and do the wash on here, which is going to be Army Paint or Strong Tone. Uh, all over the base, I'm going to water this down about 50% water to 50% wash. Uh, just to get it all in the recesses, and then we'll start the dry brushing on the base. Okay, the wash is dry, and now what we're going to do is go back with our base coat of Iroki, and instead of actually painting it on, I'm going to dry brush it on, just like we dry brushed the, uh, the light gray and the white onto the chassis, or onto the body of the at, -AT. so let me grab my dry brush here, uh, this one, and basically again the point is to load I brush up with the paint, wipe most of it off on this paper towel here, just like so. And then just kind of lightly hit the uh, the texture here on the base. Uh, the point of the or the point of the wash was twofold. Number one, obviously to shade down the uh, the, the sand color to give us some depth and to give us a, a basically a nice shadow on here number two was to actually bring all this bring all this together especially like shade in in between where the where the feet where the legs meet the uh, the base itself just to kind of tie it in together and shade it in together uh, so it looks like it goes together now what I'm going to do once this is done is add some white sands to this mix maybe a drop or two uh, and then maybe do that about three times with the uh, with the layers on here to really bring this out really brighten it up and really make it pop And here we are. The last thing left now is the rim of the base, which I am going to do with, uh, with regular black.
And we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, this beast is done. I laid down some paper towels now so that we can give it a matte varnish over the top, and I'll take final pictures. So let me do the matte varnish, and I'll give you guys a final walk around through here. Before I get started here, I do want to want to make one point real quick here for you guys. Uh, the one thing I learned pretty quickly when I started airbrushing, or actually relearning it now too, since it's been a while since I've done any real airbrushing, is I used to what I used to do is I used to mix all my paint and like all my varnishes and stuff inside of the cup itself. Um, that actually leads to quicker and more clogging. So what I do now is got myself these little plastic cups, and whatever I'm. Uh, Whatever I'm mixing, whether it's paint or whether it's uh, varnish or whatever it is, I'll mix it in the cups first and I'll pour it into the airbrush itself so that I'm not like clogging it off right away. And it's actually seemed to have helped quite a bit. So just just a quick tip basically, pre-mix all your paint outside of the airbrush because I'm just as guilty of mixing inside of the actual airbrush cup. But um, this this actually helps quite a bit to alleviate that uh, that issue. And we are done. We are finally done. Actually, well, let me not say finally. I mean, this was actually a really fun project. I enjoyed it. Um, the only thing I would have done differently, I think, if I did this again, was all the uh, all the weathering, like all the staining and stuff, all the oxidation, all the rust and whatnot. I would have probably next time around. I'll probably you do uh, using regular weathering products as opposed to using oil paints because that took forever. But other than that, I'm actually quite happy with how this came out, our, our Jakku version of an AT-AT. I think it looks pretty cool. I'd like to build this model in the future, maybe a couple of, uh, of Hoth versions, a diorama or so, using a couple, if not more, of these on Hoth. Uh, the fact that it's as... Uh, as mobile as it is that you can pretty much like set the legs in, in any position as possible and, or, or as you wish and, and whatnot makes this very versatile for whatever kind of diorama you'd like to use this in or whatever kind of scenes you'd like to use these in so it's 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 a really great model um, I will include pictures here at the end of the video just so you guys can get a better look at what this looks like under proper lighting or under a proper background even but yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, it was actually a very, very fun model to paint, uh, as well as to build. Granted, I built this a long time ago, so it's it's just been sitting. Um, that said, yeah, I, I had a great time with this. It was very fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know what you guys think of a new format on the videos, uh, if, if it's something that I should do in the future, or if I should go back to my old format. Let me know. And as always, if you liked what you saw, please subscribe, please or, uh, please uh, like the video, please subscribe to the video. And again, as always, thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time.